and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video I'm going to explain two data models, the ER model and the object-oriented model. And within the ER model I'm going to explain specialization, generalization and aggregation. So let's start with specialization. Specialization uh, looks like this diagrammatically, and I'm going to explain what it actually means. So it is a refinement from an initial entity set into successive levels of entity subgroupings in a top-down manner. So what that means is you start with a person, and then you realize that person contains so many attributes. It contains ID and name and address and salary and total credits and rank and hours per week. And we are trying to create a database for a university. So a person who is in a university would have all these attributes, ID, name, address, salary, total credits, rank, hours per week. So after doing this, you would realize that uh, you wasted some space because every person does not have a salary because that person could be a student. So you decided, let me split it. Okay, so you split into two different entities which are employee and student. And then what happened is um, you, you also uh, attached the separate attributes. So there are some common attributes between employee and student and those are ID, name and address. Both of them have those. But there are attributes like salary, rank, and hours per week, which you want to associate only with an employee, not with a student. And with student, you only want to have total credits. So that's what you did. But then you further realized that employee also has uh, attributes like rank and hours per week. And rank only applies to instructor and hours per week only applies to the secretary. So you decided now, you would want to split it further into instructor and secretary and keep salary with employee because salary is common for instructor and the secretary. So you've made one more division here and created it in this manner. Now what happens here is this is called specialization when you are refining into successive levels of subgroupings. So specialization is when an entity make include subgroupings of entities that are distinct in some way from other entities in the set. That is what specialization is. Now we're going to see what generalization means. And the diagram is the same. And I'll tell you the, re the reason because generalization is designing in a bottom-up manner in which multiple entity sets are synthesized into a higher level entity set on the basis of common features. So this is a bottom-up manner where specialization, you were starting from the top person and then dividing it into employee, student, and then dividing employee into instructor and secretary. So the commonalities can be explained, uh, can be expressed by generalization. And for all practical purposes, generalization is a simple inversion of specialization, which is why the diagram is the same. And it is used to emphasize the similarities among lower level entity sets. And it is also used to hide the differences. It also permits an economy of representation in that shared attributes are not repeated. So generalization basically begins from the bottom. So what happens is you have a university and you decide that in your university, there are two kinds of people. There are instructors and, sorry, you decide that there are three kinds of people, instructors, secretaries, and students. And so you go on and create three entity sets, which are instructor, secretary, and student. And so instructor contains attributes like ID, name, address, salary, and rank. And secretary contains attributes like ID, name, address, salary, and hours per week. And students contain attributes like ID, name, address, and total credits. Now, when you look at your diagram that you have created, you would realize that 
there are so many common attributes between instructor, secretary, and student. So what to do? So you decide to merge some of the attributes and which is why you are taking the salary attribute from instructor and the salary attribute from secretary and merging them into one entity set called employee and adding that attribute just here. And instructor and secretary also have ID, name and address which are common. So those attributes also you will add here. Okay. Now what you ha have is uh, you have employee and you have student and between those the common attributes are ID, name and address. So again you merge these two, create a person, at a person entity set and add these attributes ID, name and address and keep the different attributes separate in separate entity sets. So that is what generalization looks like. It is just a different process than specialization, but the concept is almost the same, and which is why the diagram remains the same. And at every level, for example, this is my second level, and on the second level, whatever attributes are held by the first level or higher level entity set, those attributes are inherited downwards. So all these attributes are inherited by employee and student, salary is inherited by instructor and secretary, and therefore instructor and secretary also inherit ID, name and address. So that is the concept of specialization and generalization, but it's a different way of thinking. If you were doing specialization, you would be thinking that I have person entity set, and it contains some attributes like salary and total credits and they do not apply to every person in this. So you split it into two parts. But if you were doing generalization, you would start with employee and student and then you would realize that employee is having only salary which is different from student and student is having only total credits which is different from employees. But they have common attributes like ID, name and address. So you would merge employee and student and put their common attributes here with person entity set. So that is generalization. The only difference is the top down and bottom up approach. Okay, now there are two types of specializations and generalizations. One is overlapping, where an entity may belong to multiple specialized entity sets and disjoint where an entity may belong to at most one specialized entity set. For an example, if you take employee and student, you might have a university where an employee is also a student. For example, some student might be working in the library as a librarian to earn extra money and that student would be an employee of the, of the university, but at the same time, He's also a student of the university. So for such a student, the data will be stored in employee table as well as student table. So in which case you will have some overlapping between employee and student because they have something common, some common entities, which is why this will be called an overlapping generalization or specialization. And to show that in the diagram, we use two separate arrows like this. One arrow is going from here and one arrow is going from here. And we always use hollow arrows. We do not color these, this part of the arrow. We keep it without color. So this shows a, an overlapping specialization or generalization. And a disjoint specialization would be when you are talking about instructor and secretary, we know for sure that an instructor would not also be a secretary. So there won't be any value which is present in instructor, which will also be present in secretary table. So that is why these two are disjoint. They have nothing in common. Uh, entity wise, not attribute wise, they have common attributes, but no common entity between the two. So that is why we are creating this type of an arrow so there's a single arrow and then it splits into two. And this single arrow is also hollow. So there is no color in it. 
So this is what uh, what are uh, this is what two types of generalization and specialization look like, and how you can display them in a diagram. Now the next topic is aggregation, and aggregation is basically an abstraction through which relationships are treated as higher level entities so and uh, what it allows you to do is it allows you to express relationships among relationships so usually you would express relationships among entity sets but aggregation allows you to express relationships among relationships themselves um, if you know that uh, from my video in on uh, ER model, I explained different types of relationship sets and uh, some of them are recursive, binary and ternary. And I said a quaternary relationship was also possible, but to do so would create unnecessary complexities in your uh, ER model, which is why we never create a quaternary relationship instead we choose to create an aggregation whereby we try to group the ternary relationship so this is a ternary relationship between instructor project and student and we try to group this relationship and attach another relationship with it which is eval for so it is an evaluation that is given by the instructor to that student on a particular project. So because this is a many-to-many -many relationship on all sides, which means one instructor could be guiding multiple projects and multiple students. And one student could, could be working on multiple projects and therefore is guided by multiple instructors. And so also one project is guided by multiple instructors and multiple students. So it is a many-to-many -many relationship on all the sides and on such a relationship if you wanted to attach an evaluation entity set then making it a quaternary relationship would be very complex when you have to convert it into tables so which is why you create you will create another relationship set called eval for and then connect to this entity set using this so it is it is said that this relationship set is actually connected with the relationship set project guide and not with uh, the other three entity sets. So that is called an aggregation. And a few more things about aggregation. We regard the relationship set, which is project underscore guide as a higher level entity set called project underscore guide. So just for the aggregation purpose, we will regard this as an entity set and attach it in this manner. Such an entity set is treated in the same manner as is any other entity set. So although it's a relationship, we will treat it as an entity set. So that is why it is called aggregation. So then this creates a binary relationship eval for between project guide and evaluation to represent which student project instructor combination and evaluation is done for. So you have a combination of instructor, project and student and for each one there is an evaluation given. So that is what aggregation is. And now lastly, um, this would also conclude our unit on data model or series of lectures on data model. It began with um, network model and uh, sorry, it began with the relational model and the network model and then the ER model. And I'm going to link down videos about all those below in the description box. And the last model we are going to study is the object oriented data model. And it looks like this diagrammatically. In this, all entities are treated as objects. Objects have properties and methods. Class is a collection of similar types of objects. So as you can see, there are different classes, customer, address, state, and zip code. And each class is having some properties. This is like assigning a, a data type like and variables like customer name, number, given name, surname for customer. For address, there is a street and there's a city. 
these are all properties for state. So what you would show using ellipses in an ER diagram, you would show like this in an object oriented model. So state code and name and for zip code, you simply have a zip code and everywhere you have some functions also. So these are something extra. So there's an analogy which I will be explaining later, but you can see here that there are also methods which are used instead of stored procedures. So in SQL, you will be learning stored procedures, but here you have functions which are mentioned here, get full name, get purchase history, print label, all these things after the line are functions which are associated with that particular class. So that is what an object oriented model looks like. And if you study any object oriented programming language, this is the model that is used and it's a very popular model. So the analogy between this model and a relational model is that instead of relations or tables, we use classes. Instead of tuples or rows, we use objects. And instead of attributes, we use here properties. And instead of stored procedures, which you will study in SQL, we use here methods. So that is what an object-oriented model looks like. And please check the description box for lecture notes on different types of data models that have been explained in this course. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.